Hello and welcome to our Clinical Cafe conversation for September. I'm Bob Martin and I'm joined by our presenter for the September Clinical Cafe, Heather Evans. Heather is a licensed social worker. She's in private counseling practice in Coopersburg, Pennsylvania. She has more than 15 years experience in counseling and extensive experience training in the issues of sexual trauma. As co-founder of Valley Against Sex Trafficking Coalition, known as VAST, she's a leader in finding ways to raise awareness of sex trafficking in our communities and forming alliances to combat it. And she was the presenter today at our clinical cafe. Heather, welcome. Thanks for taking the time with us. Thank you for having me. When we talk about this issue, I know a lot of folks that aren't very um, knowledgeable about it will say, well, sex trafficking, that's something that happens some other place, mm -hmm. other countries, other cultures. Definitely not the case, though. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. And that was the same misconception that I had before I started learning about what it looked like here in the United States. And sex trafficking really is when someone through force, fraud, or coercion is brought either into the labor industry or the sex industry. And so wherever there is prostitution, there is trafficking. And by definition, if someone is under the age of 18 and they are involved in the commercial sex industry, such as something like prostitution, they are automatically, by definition, considered a victim of human trafficking. There's no question of consent or anything, any any bogus kind of thing like Absolutely that. Absolutely not. They don't need to prove force, fraud, or coercion if they're under the age of 18. So we have a long way to go in educating people that there is no such thing as a teen or a child in prostitution. They are a victim of sex trafficking. So today you're talking to a group of mental and behavioral health care professionals. Mm -hmm. What role does that particular cohort of people uh, play in terms of identifying and fighting this particular problem? It's a huge role. I think one of the other misconceptions about human trafficking is that you need to be trafficked or moved from place to place. But many times individuals continue living in their own home, maybe even going to school, and they're being trafficked by a pimp, by a trafficker. And so, first of all, just to be aware of what human trafficking is and what are some of the indicators as a service provider, they can identify it and they can, they can um, stop it. They can ask questions to get that individual to intervene and get that individual the help that they need. But also, once an individual is identified as a victim of human trafficking and they are brought out of it, they need so many services. And there are complex layers of trauma as well as physical, social needs. And so our service providers can really provide the wraparound services that are necessary to bring them to a place of restoration and healing. If there were one or two things you feel a community needs to really focus on, top priority in terms of addressing this problem, what would it be? Wow, that's a really difficult <laughs> that's an unfair question. question. <laughs> um, but I will focus on both prevention and awareness. Prevention, um, there are two aspects of that. First of all, the reason that individuals are being trafficked is because there's a demand. So we have, that's a whole bigger issue that we're not even, we haven't addressed today at the training, but the issue of why is there a demand for the commercial sex industry that's actually leading people to become enslaved into prostitution, into the commercial sex industry. So we have to think about preventing it from a demand aspect and also just from the way that we interact with our individuals. Today we talked a lot about the risk factors. So anyone who is vulnerable, if they have a history of abuse or neglect or running away or instability in their household, they're vulnerable to being trafficked. So what are we doing to come alongside our individuals as mentors to help them, to help protect their vulnerabilities, to help increase their confidence that they would not be as at risk for exploitation? And finally, the awareness piece is just being becoming a student, becoming aware of this issue. Then we can make a difference in our community. In my spheres of influence, I can talk about this. And once people understand it, they can see it. But before you're trained to really understand what it is, you miss it. You miss it in your work. And people in the front lines in law enforcement and service providers say, we missed it for years and years until now we have this new understanding. And we can identify it, and therefore we can take action and make a difference. Sounds like there's a role to play for really everybody in the community. Absolutely. Now, uh, VAST is doing some great work um, as a coalition here in the Lehigh Valley. If folks want to know more about it, how, how would they get that information? You can visit our website, www.thevast.org. You can follow us on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, any form of social media, and that's a way to stay updated on events and trainings that we may have. We have community meetings 
every other month on the second Monday of the month. So again, if you're involved with following us on social media or receiving our email updates, you'll understand when that will be. But those meetings are ways to receive ongoing training and find ways to get involved. And as you said, there's a place for everyone in everyone's sphere of influence and their corner of expertise. There's a place for them to take action and get involved. Heather, thank you for being with us today, taking the time. I know thank you're you very too. busy today, so it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Heather Evans is the co-founder of VAST, the Valley Against Sex Trafficking Coalition, and she is the presenter at the September Kids Peace Institute Clinical Cafe. I'm Bob Martin, giving hope, help, and healing to children, families, and communities. This is Kids Peace.